This episode is brought to you by the Solo to Group Practice Webinar. It's a free webinar that you can find at practiceoftherapy.com slash group. And also brought to you by Therapy Notes, therapynotes.com. This is the Practice of Therapy podcast with Gordon Brewer, helping you to navigate your private practice journey. This is session number 177 of the Practice of Therapy podcast. Hello, folks. I'm Gordon Brewer. Glad you've joined me. Hope you're having a good day or and also week or weekend, whenever you might be listening to this. And I'm so glad you've joined me for this uh, particular episode of the podcast. Um, I've got coming up my good friend Jessica Tapana. And Jessica is one of those people that I've gotten to know over over the last few years, and Jessica is in a mastermind group with me. And uh, so we've really been doing kind of some in-depth work just around our own practices and businesses. And um, if you um, have been listening to last week's podcast episode, I had Uriah Guilford. And so he's another member of that mastermind group. And then next week, I've got Whitney Owens, who's going to be joining me again for the podcast. So it's kind of turning into kind of a mini series of uh, some of my mastermind peeps. And so uh, anyway, I'm looking forward to you hearing my conversation with Jessica. And we're just talking about just really kind of life in general. And then also her um, kind of her business, uh, Simplified SEO. And so Jessica's going to kind of give you the backstory on that and what she does to help um Counselors and therapists get their um, their websites to rank well on Google, and so you'll get to hear us talk some about some about that. But before we get to Jessica, one of the things I'd like to invite you to do is to go over and check out practiceoftherapy.com slash group. You know, some of the most common questions I get asked by consulting clients and listeners of the podcast are just around what it takes to transition from solo, being a solo provider, to being a group practice owner, and um, what it takes to bring on other therapists into your practice. And because I've done this myself, and it's a big part of my own private practice journey, uh, I wanted to share a new resource that I've created with my good friend, Dr. David Hall, who's also a, a group practice owner. And that is the Solo to Group Practice webinar. It's Solo to Group Practice, Adding More Therapists to Grow Your Time and Income. And in this free webinar, David and I go into some of the lessons that we've learned about being in group practice, along with some practical tips about starting a group practice and some of the pitfalls and mistakes to avoid um, when starting a group practice. And again, this is a free resource that you can get by going to practiceoftherapy.com slash group. And if you stick around to the end of the webinar, you'll also get access to some some discounts and some time-limited bonuses that we've included in the webinar. And this is a, a webinar that you can schedule your time for. It's a, an automated webinar. And so um, be sure and check that out and go to practiceoftherapy.com slash group. And also, before we get to Jessica, as always, a big thanks to our sponsor for the for the podcast, and that is Therapy Notes, therapynotes.com. They are the leading electronic health record system for private practices, those of us in the mental health care. And uh, they're who I use in my practice, and I'm really pleased with what it brings us and the and the ability to automate more within my practice. They have a patient portal where clients can come in and schedule appointments, fill out their information, 
file paperwork, all of that sort of thing. Also, they have telehealth included in the platform. And so you can you can work with your clients remotely, just all in one place. The other thing about Therapy Notes that I absolutely love is the fact that they have such great support. If you have a problem or run into a glitch, they you can actually talk to a real person really soon by just going to their support network. Also, they give you the ability to transfer records. So if you're using another system, they will absolutely help you transfer your records over to Therapy Notes. So be sure to check them out, therapynotes.com, and use the promo code GORDON, just G-O-R-D-O-N, and get two months of their services for free. So be sure and check that out. And so now, without further ado, here's my good friend, Jessica Tapana, and I'm so glad for you to get to hear from Jessica. Hello, everyone, and welcome again to the Practice of Therapy podcast, and I'm so glad to have back with me my good friend, Jessica Tapana. Jessica, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to have a good excuse to chat with you. Yes, yes. I was uh, one of the things that's been great about this year is uh First of all, we're moving out of COVID, <laughs> it seems like. But the, the other thing is, is that I've, I've been able to reconnect with Jessica and our good friend Whitney Owens and Uriah Guilford, and we're in a mastermind group together. And it's just been such a wonderful experience of just holding each other accountable and bouncing ideas off of each other. And so it's just been great to reconnect with you, Jessica, in that way as well. As I start with everyone, why don't you tell folks a little bit about your private practice journey and just kind of how you've landed where you've landed? Sounds good. Well, like most people, I, you know, had a couple of jobs where I uh, had the privilege and honor of working with people in different settings, starting at a state hospital and a school and providing uh, therapy in those in those spaces. And then when I was pregnant with my daughter, I just decided it was time for a change of pace, opened my private practice, um, did a lot of the legwork for it, uh, you know, the paperwork and all that on my maternity leave and went back, finished up my previous job and started my private practice in 2017 thinking, silly me, I thought I'd work about 10 hours a week, see, well, see about 10 clients a week, you know, work very part time. And what I found is that there was such a need that even though I was private pay quickly, I had 30 clients a week and um, started to expand into a group practice less than a year in. And um, at that point, taught myself search engine optimization so that people weren't always just calling for Jessica, they were calling for Aspire and we could work with um, getting them in to see my clinicians that I was bringing on. And from there, it's grown to the size that I wanted it to be. And then we're a nice um, tight knit group of about seven um, private pay therapists at this point. And actually, you know, to be honest, I think it was not too far into my journey that I added simplified SEO consulting because it was it, my own efforts to optimize my website were so effective that friends started asking me for help. And I joke that that's the accidental business and the mm-hmm. private practice was the yeah. purposeful one. Yeah. Um, but that's grown now too. And I have a team of about six people there. Um, mo- everybody has some sort of mental health background, at least a, a bachelor's degree in social work or psychology and several working on master's degree or with a master's degree. And so then we hang out over there. So now I'm really fortunate that I have this opportunity to to serve clinicians, serve clients, um, and, uh, and hang out with really fun people all day, every day. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a, that is fun. And you've had just a lot of just phenomenal growth. I know since I've known Jessica, Jessica and I've known each other for a while and we were, um, well, it's been two years now, but, um, other than if you count the virtual killing at camp, uh, we had, we had had contact with each other and talked and all that sort of thing before that, but finally got to meet each other in person out in Colorado two years ago. And we were just talking before we started recording, hoping to be able to get together again this year, if all goes well, 
Uh, but um, one of the things, you know, also that Jessica, you and I had talked about before we started recording is just all this life balance stuff. And I, uh, I know for you and for me, you've got two kids and doing the mom thing, doing, you know, the family stuff, plus running two businesses. Um, how do you do it? And what have you learned about all of that? You know, I think that was my favorite thing about our mastermind is that we um, all um, have two businesses plus um, people that we care about at home. And uh, it is hard and it is um, a daily struggle. I've, you know, I learned pretty early in my practice to tell my clients that like, this is my schedule for this semester. But just so you know, in my family needs change. And so I tell tell clients, you know, from day one, okay, your time slot's going to be um, four o'clock in the afternoon on Tuesdays, I I'm going to tell you, I'll hold that for you for a semester, but at the end of every semester, my schedule tends to be tweaked a little bit. And so I've always just given myself that space, but I think this year, you know, the question, the term that keeps coming up in my mind, I talk about with clients too, is values. What are my values and how are those playing out and where I'm putting my time? Does my time reflect what I see as my core values? And, uh, and I think that's a struggle because sometimes, you know, two things, family is really important. And maybe my kid has a, you know, is sick that day. And I value being there for my kids when they're sick, but then also, you know, there's this, um, client that I really need to help, or there's, you know, support that one of my employees at either business needs. And so I value that as well, providing them support and providing them, you know, with everything they need. And, so I think it's just a constant question. And what I find really helpful is just naming the two things that are that seem to be competing and say, okay, these are both important. Mm-hmm. Which one right in this minute needs to needs to um kind of take the, you know, take the top place for this particular moment in time because this particular moment might be different than tomorrow or right. whatnot. But it's a it's a constant question. And I um and then I, I thought I had it and then COVID happened mm-hmm. and my husband's a nurse. And so he's a nurse at the hospital. So when COVID happened, we had, I had months where everybody else was complaining about being bored in the lockdown. And I'm like, I'm trying to educate two children, all right. <laughs> still meet the needs of all my clients, still meet the needs of my team. And by golly, it's important for my husband to go to work every day and be there every day. Um, and so I think that it was a bit of a reset and, um, and we're still reset, you know, it's been a slow comeback from COVID. Right. And, mm-hmm. um, I think I'm really excited because this summer, my kids are going to be, my kids are going to be in, um, summer camp from nine to four, five days a week. And I'm like, wow, I'm gonna have the most normal wow. schedule I've had in ages. And right. I, I've, I love it. I'm going to, I've been homeschooling my son, so I'm going to miss that, but it will be nice to have steady, normal, quote unquote. Work right. Style. Right. What, what have you found that has helped you manage your time? Because I would think you, um, you know, time management would just be <laughs> totally important for you and just the, the schedule that you keep. Yeah. I think, um, accepting my imperfections and accepting the reality. I always had mm-hmm. this um, thought that you could just go, go, go. Like if something else needed to be squeezed in, I could just squeeze it in and find a way. And I think that that worked for me for for an amount of time that I was, you know, the type of person that, yeah, if I just needed to squeeze in the ninth client of the day, I'd just squeeze in the ninth client of the day. And I've reached a point where I've just accepted that um, that's not always practical, that I can do better. I can be better for everybody if I do accept my limitations. And so I've had people Mm -hmm. complain, you know, trying to schedule a time to meet with me that I sometimes have to schedule it weeks out even. Um, And, you know, that's not always, people aren't always a big fan. And I used to be the type I'd be like, oh, let's meet at night. I literally have met with clients at um, like nine o'clock at night. I had a couple of times where if my wow. last night finished at eight 45 and somebody was having an emergency, I'd do whatever it took. And now I've learned, um, this year that really drawing those boundaries, I think has made me more present in everything that I've done, but it's been really critical with everything going on just to say, um, you know, the, all my openings are, you can see my openings and these are what they are. My VA is actually, um, I would be like, okay, this time is open. Um, so anybody that calls that's a fit for me, if they can't do that time, unfortunately, you're going to don't even tell me about them. And, you know, she used to right. email me and say like, but there's this person and they sound perfect for you. And then I'd cave and I'd be like, okay, we'll make it work. Yeah. But now, 
where you're just more ruthless. Ruthless. Don't tell me they exist, or I will cave. Yeah, yeah. There, there's so many parallels for Jessica. And I, yeah, there's just um, the same kind of thing. And I, you bring up a good point in that the importance of being able to outsource things, um, particularly like with a VA and scheduling and that sort of thing. Uh, I think for us as therapists, we just generally we generally want to help people, and so we you know, we, we hear from people and they're really kind of desperate to get help. And we just, like you said, we cave. And so it's always better, I think, just to hand that off to our, our virtual assistants or our intake coordinators or whoever, however you phrase that, because they can look at your schedule and say, okay, this is, this is it. And there's no negotiating that. And that's a, that's a, that's a tough one too. I, I, I've gone through the same thing where like you, we had talked about Jessica, where I really cut my schedule back. I'm only seeing clients three days a week and I've really cut back the number of slots. I mean, I've just have afternoon slots and that's, that's it. And so um, really sticking to that is, um, is important. And like with, with family stuff and I've shared with folks just, uh, you know, caring for my wife who is disabled. There's a lot of things that just come up and you have to change and juggle your schedule. But I think um, you're right. Setting those boundaries and, and sticking to them is real important piece and just being able to manage all the things that we want to do. Yeah. And I found yeah. that people generally respect that, you know, if I'm setting boundaries, with my clinicians, um, I tend to put them first in a lot of ways and my clients, mm-hmm. but you know, I know that like if one of my clinicians has a clinical question, like that's really important that they have that space. And so I'll generally drop everything to talk to them. But I recently took a week off actually last week and I told them ahead of time, I'm like, look, if there's a clinical question, I need you guys to reach out first to one another. Obviously if it's life or death and you've tried talking to people and you really need to talk to me, that's great call me, but, um, I really need you first. And that was a really hard boundary for me to take, but it was so important to me that I give my family that undivided attention. And at the end of the week, my son looked up and he's seven. He goes, mommy, you haven't worked all week. And of course in my mind, I'm like, and I totally checked emails a couple of times. He doesn't know about (laughs) but it meant so much to them. And this week, you know, my kids have gotten great reports from school. Like they've had just a good week. And I'm like, that's because they had my undivided attention. And Mm -hmm. how much better than I've been bringing excitement. Like I was ready to get back to work. And, you know, Monday, I couldn't believe how much I accomplished because I'd taken that time and drawn that boundary that when a couple of people had texted me, I literally said, call somebody else, you know, I don't draw those boundaries, but it made, it was in everybody's best interest. Right. Right. And I think, I think for those of us in group practice, one of the things that I know I've had to learn to do better is yeah, like you're, you're mentioning set setting boundaries with your team. I mean, um, <laughs> you know, uh, d- d- I had uh, we had a staff meeting or staff ret- uh, kind of an online staff retreat uh, this past week, and one of the things I told them is just is you know don't bring me menial problems. If we're out of toilet paper, I don't need to know about that. Just somebody go get the toilet paper. And then you can, if you need to be reimbursed, I can reimburse you, but just don't bother me with those things. And I think that's what you have to really be uh, when you're in the positions that um, we're in as leaders and being able to run, you know, juggle several things. um, It's so important to delegate and to hand things off. And I, I know that's something I'm still working on for me, just my is, is learning how to do that better. I had a big one this year. Um, I haven't done this with my private practice, but with Simplified, I had some, I started getting some help with my managing my email inbox. Now there's still a ton that I need to respond to personally. Mm -hmm. And so we have, you know, they, but they go into a folder. And so I try not to check all the other folders, you know, very Mm -hmm. on a regular basis. Um, because what I had found was I'd put this incredible pressure on myself to respond to emails within 24 hours, you know, in the corporate, not corporate in like the agency setting. That was always what I was told is emails must be responded to in 24 hours. But between my two businesses and everything, I was getting, you know, well over a hundred emails a day and to weed through them was, um, too much. And so, um, actually, uh, 
uh, our friend Uriah, I'm going through his mm -hmm. um, seven day email series about this. And I'm like, he's right. You've got to delete stuff. You've got to, yeah. um, you've got to automate. And so we've put rules in my inbox right now. I'm back to personally checking it all, but like there's some rules. So some things go to folders that like, I don't need to see all of the automatic somebody's paid for some things or whatnot, but I think it makes, I, I just think it makes a difference. And I, you know, I've started asking mm -hmm. myself, I'm like, is this really something I have to do? Or is there someone else that can do it? And, you know, even with moving offices, I told you earlier that I'm getting a new office for my practice today. And I'm so excited, but my, you're like, oh yeah, furniture, where are you getting furniture from? And I'm like, my VA is taking care of it because mm -hmm. I sat there and, and she's amazing for the record. She just is finishing up her degree in psychology and she's been with us for years. So she knows my practice really well. And we sat down and we just talked about like, what do we need? We make creative vision board. She sends me texts for approval on some stuff, but you know, I, I would love that. That is a project that would be fun for me. I set up our last office. Um, but does it have to be me that does it, you know, mm -hmm. probably not. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a, that's a hard one. I think for people to let go of sometimes is just being able thinking that we, we have to do it all, but really that's, that's what moves you from being, um, you know, kind of a solo entrepreneur or solo business owner into a group business owner, owner, or as I've heard it put too, is moving from just a, a business owner to being a CEO. And that's a, that's an important piece to remember. Um, okay. And um, I, I've, well, you mentioned Uriah's seven day course and um, Uriah is uh He's um, probably, as we're recording this, he will have, one of his episodes will have come out before this one, but uh, we'll put a link in the show summary. That's on my to-do list is to do his the seven-day email thing. And so that's, uh, yeah, I think I'm glad to hear you're having success with it. I'm excited Give about it. Give him a backlink for it because it's great. He needs the SEO juice from backlink. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There we go. There we go. <laughs> so, a I'm yeah, having fun. But. Yeah. So, well, to, you know, to switch gears, um, uh, Jessica, tell folks a little bit about simplified SEO and just kind of that part of your business and how you got started with that. Yeah. So as we were talking about outsourcing, I was thinking, um, you know, my uh, not so secret, dirty little secret is I actually outsource a lot of my own private practice SEO now, even though I know how to do it. I've literally trained all the staff at Simplified to do their job. But at this point, even I'm like, in my private practice, do I really need to be the one to optimize all of my own blog posts? Probably not. And so I even outsource from my private practice to Simplified. But yeah, no, Simplified um, started out really slow with, I was um, trying to learn to optimize my own website. I liked my website, but nobody was seeing it. You know, I would watch Google Analytics and I even had people test it. I, I remember one day having my brother-in-law across the room. I'm like, get on, get on my website. And let me see mm -hmm. if this even works. Cause it says nobody's going to my website and I don't believe it. And I saw, I could see even what page he was on, on Google Analytics. It's mm -hmm. really cool if you've never looked at that stuff. Right, right. It feels kind of creepy, but and it's like, <laughs> okay, it's working, but nobody's finding it. And so, you know, I did all my marketing at midnight early on because mm -hmm. I had a newborn and was up at weird hours. And so, you know, midnight, I could listen to this podcast and read this book. And I read, I don't know how many books and just totally taught myself this, but what I found is applying it to our field is unique. You know, they talk, people talk a lot about getting reviews. I can't go ask my clients ethically for reviews as a social worker. And so, um, I figured a lot of it out along the way and then had friends that were like, Hey, can you help? And, you know, the amount I've learned Gordon, the amount that SEO has changed, even in the last few years is incredible. Google's wow. had updates. Our field has gotten more competitive, more and more therapists are hearing about SEO. And so it used to be, I could give you three tips. You could go do them and you'd get, you know, at least to the second page. And now it definitely is more work, but it's fun. It's just this puzzle. And so my team, we have, I think there's about six of us all together. Several are part-time um, right now. And I have a director of SEO services. She's the tech, she wears the techie hat. She's actually mm -hmm. an MSW herself. She has her master's in social social work. And so she has them and she ran our rape and sexual violence prevention center locally for a while. So she, she gets the, that piece of it, but she also just is much more technical. She's actually built websites. 
I have, but don't look at them. Um, <laughs> so she actually knows what in, you know, all these techie stuff, she can figure it out and she can solve any techie problem. I'm more the big picture person and under and, but between the two of us, we stay on top of stuff. And every single week we're talking, we're training our staff and we have developed over the years, this really cool system where like um, one person will do the first level of work on, on a site, then a second person will view it. And then a third person will take a, you know, and make more changes and try to push the envelope further and get them even closer. And then a third person will take a look and be like, man, you still can't get them ranking for this. Okay. Recommend that they do this or let's try this or things, Mm -hmm. you know, we get multiple, multiple eyes on every page. I just think that our results have gotten better and better, even though it has gotten more competitive and we've had to add more and more things that we do here and there, but SEO is fun. It's a puzzle. I like to say it's non-life threatening. Yeah. I work with a, a lot of suicidal clients. Um, a lot of, I did a lot of DBT, um, until about a year and a half ago. And, uh, you know, it's kind of nice sometimes to work on your website and know that if I mess this up, the absolute worst case scenario is a website goes down for a little while, but I've never had right. one down for more than, you know, a very short period of time. We've oh, all wow. yeah. been able to stuff. So yeah. I love it. Well, I know. Yeah. And it's, it's just amazing what you have learned. And I think what, what I love about what you're doing, which is again, some similar uh, kind of parallel paths that we're on is um, you've taken all the stuff that you have learned in, in building your practice and particularly around the specific thing, uh, SEO, uh, search engine optimization, and um, are teaching other people how to do that because you've learned it all the hard way. <laughs> and it doesn't have to be that way for them. Uh, and so if you were to, if you were to maybe give some people some quick fixes or with their SEO, just maybe a few tips on that. What would they be? Um, Content first, Google has to know what your website is about. We're always worried about, um, about uh, writing thing. One complaint I hear a lot from people is, you know, I'm afraid if I write a bunch of words on my website, nobody's going to read them all. Um, That's why I recommend breaking it up with subheadings because we make Mm -hmm. our pages scannable so that people can quickly get to the information they want. Um, but you have to have enough information on that website for Google to actually know what it is you're really good at. Um, you know, a really, if I, if I say I do, ev- and, and again, this comes to niching too, which mm-hmm. I know a lot of people talk about. Um, but if I say I do, I work with everybody. I, I just provide counseling for everything. And I give mm-hmm. you this list of 50 different possible diagnoses or social emotional issues that I might treat. Then Google's like, wow, Okay. You can spell depression. That's cool. Um, (laughs) But if I really niche down and I write a whole page about depression and then I write a couple of blog posts on like how to, you know, how to combat depression or best tips for dealing with depression, then suddenly Google starts to see like, oh, this website really has really knows its stuff about depression and it sends people there. You know, personally, I think of that content not just as serving to get me in front of my potential clients from an SEO perspective, but also in just sharing some of what I know with the world. And the more that I share what I know through blogging, the better, um, not only will I rank on Google, but the impact that I can make on people who will never walk through my doors as a client and the people who do walk through my doors, they've heard my voice. You know, Mm -hmm. we've had multiple times where somebody has called and requested the specific therapist that wrote a blog that appealed to them. So sorry, this uh, blogging is dude, Gordon, we could talk for hours, Oh yeah, yeah, but but having content, but have content on your website is one of the big ones. Another big one is make sure that your website, um, is uh represents you really well because and it sounds weird me as an seo person saying that i don't build websites i'm not trying to sell website building services please do not come to me for website building um but having a website that you like that works well um you'll want to show it off if you Uh have a website that speaks to your ideal client. So I think that that's another big mistake that I see people make sometimes is they just throw something up, which we've all done. I've done it. I launched a new website that I just kind of thrown up, so to speak. Um, But I'm going back and changing it over time because um, the more it represents you, the more you want to promote it and do these things. Um, Mm -hmm. And then another quick tip, um, think about backlinks. Think about getting other people to link to your site. Um, I love guest blog 
you know, doing guest blog posts, some people don't, um, getting, um, directory listings can be really good directory listings. You have what's called your nap information on them, your name, address, and phone number. And so when your contact information is listed on these directories and they link to your site, that's really good for your SEO. Um, that, that's why I told you, I'm like, give, get, make sure to list your eyes in here. Cause that will right. help them to have a link from practice right. therapy to, right. uh, to his website. So there are lots of different ways to get back links, but just thinking about that, you know, if you're a couples counselor, is there a divorce attorney in town that has a resource list on their website mm-hmm. that you could be listed on that sort of thing? Um, right. I think that that's one of the most powerful things that you can do right there is working on um, getting back links to your site. Yeah. 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 And I think uh, as much, as much as anything you want to, uh, at least what I've learned and what seems to work for for me is you want to kind of establish yourself. Uh, I know it just uh, we repeat it over and over again in, in a particular niche as an expert in a particular area of what we do, but also in just in your writing, um, not to make your writing just all this clinical gobble, gobbledygook, uh, just make it everyday, normal regular conversational kinds of stuff. And I think part of it is, is that, you know, in graduate school, we were, we were trained to write these formal papers and blogging isn't at all like that. In fact, if you're writing it that way, nobody's going to read it because I didn't like reading all that stuff either. (laughs) You know, we were writing research papers and stuff. So, but um, yeah, so those are great tips, Jessica. And we're going to have, I want to be respectful of your time. And I know we've got a mastermind group today as we're recording this. So I'm looking, looking forward to that. But um, uh, Jessica, tell folks how they can get in touch with you and find out more uh, about um, Simplified SEO and, and just contacting you. Yeah. Um, our website is simplified SEO consulting.com or, um, people are welcome to email me at Jessica at simplified SEO consulting.com. I love it when I get people, you know, giving, asking me questions that give me ideas for new blog posts we can write or, um, wanting a quick tip or whatever, but I will say, like I mentioned, I'm not no longer putting the pressure on myself to respond within 24 hours. So I can sometimes be the person that takes you a couple days to respond. And, uh, mm-hmm. I've just decided that, um, I don't like that, but where I am right now in the world, that's okay. Because I do yeah. give back to people and I do love, I, right. I love talking about SEO and websites and private practice building and all the things. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Jessica, I'm so glad that we're in our group together and I'm so glad you're, we're on the podcast with me and we'll do it again. I know for sure. And we'll have links here in the show summary, those good old backlinks here in the show summary and the show notes uh, to Jessica's stuff. And so you can find out more about her and connect with her. She's a lot of fun. So um, anyway, thanks, Jessica. so glad you got to hear my conversation with Jessica. I just enjoy getting together with her and uh, being able to have these conversations just about all these things that go on within our practices. And, you know, one of the things that I would really encourage anybody to do, and that is to to network with other therapists and counselors uh, within our field and also within in private practice. It's It's one of the best ways to get support. And I know that I'm just thoroughly enjoying my mastermind group and being able to do that. And if you're interested in maybe joining a mastermind group in the future, one of the things I'll mention here is I do lead some what I call focus groups, which are mastermind groups. And I will have another one probably starting up either um, late in the summer, sometime during the summer or early fall. But if you'll go over to practiceoftherapy.com slash focus group, you can find out more about that and um, just finished up with a great group of people in this previous focus group that I led. And um, 
they, um, at least what they were telling me is that they got what they needed from it and being able to kind of take their practice to the next level and organize their practices better. But it's, again, it's whenever I've been part of a mastermind group, it has just helped me grow uh, my practice in some form or fashion quite significantly. So um, anyway, Again, thanks to Jessica, and I'm really glad that you got to hear from her and get get some of those great tips on SEO and just thinking about your website. Um, and before we go, be sure and check out the Solo to Group Practice uh, webinar, and it's on how to how to add more therapists to grow your time and income. And you can get to that again at practiceoftherapy.com slash group. And what you do is you just register for the webinar there and pick the time at which you want to uh, participate. And uh, uh, also just stick around to the end to find out about the bonuses and also the discounts you can get. So um, be sure and check that out. Practiceoftherapy.com slash group. And also, again, thanks to our sponsor, Therapy Notes, therapynotes.com. They are the leading electronic health record system for mental health providers in private practice. They're who I use in my, my practice and absolutely couldn't do without them. So be sure and check them out, therapynotes.com, and use the promo code GORDON, just G-O-R-D-O-N, and get two months of their services for free. So, well, folks, thanks again for joining me for this particular episode. Uh, be sure to subscribe to the podcast wherever you might be listening to it and leave us a review. I always love getting feedback about the podcast and um, and the ratings as well. And I'm so glad you've been with me on this journey. And I look forward to you being back with me next week. So take care, folks. been listening to the practice of therapy podcast with gordon brewer please visit us at practiceoftherapy.com for more information resources and tools to help you in starting building and growing your private practice and if you haven't done so already please sign up to receive the free private practice startup guide at practiceoftherapy.com The information in this podcast is intended to be accurate and authoritative concerning the subject matter covered. It is given with the understanding that neither the hosts, guests, or producers are rendering legal, accounting, or clinical advice. If you need a professional, you should find the right person for that.